Good Tuesday morning. I'm Father Steve from St. Bridget's Hermitage, and this is Moments with the Master. Today is the 7th day of July, 2020, and our readings for today come from the book of Hosea, chapter 8, verses 4 through 7, Psalms 115, and where I'm going to be drawing my reflections from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 9, verses 32 through 38. Folks, I always encourage you to read those passages for yourself. You can't be built up in the Word if you're not in the Word. So, take a little time today, take a look at those passages. In today's readings, we see several people bringing a man to Christ. He's demon-possessed and has lost the ability to speak. And Jesus has compassion upon him and drives the demon out, and his speech is restored. And we read that the crowd of witnesses there were shocked and amazed at the power of Jesus' ministry and his, and his miracles. We read they said one another that no, nothing like this had ever been seen in Israel. But then we go on to read that the Jewish leaders were in the crowd. And they weren't shocked and amazed. They weren't pleased. They weren't happy. You think they would be giving the glory to God, but they, but they weren't. They were critical. They made derogatory and dismissive comments. They went so far as to say Jesus drove the demon out by the power of the prince of demons. You see, people haven't changed much in 2,000 years. You know, as you and I go about our daily lives and we try to share the gospel and show our love of Christ to people, there's going to be dismissive people. There's going to be critical people. There's going to be people that think that their candle will shine brighter if they blow yours out. We read in St. John 15 and 18, Remember the word I said to you. Servants are not greater than their master. If they persecute me, they'll persecute you. So, there's always going to be those people. But you know, in, at least in this passage at this time, Christ didn't respond. Telling us that sometimes silence is the best answer. We don't have to respond to every comment or criticism. Well, there's going to be times when we do have to, and we, and we should, defend our, our ministry and our and our gospel and def defend our, our beliefs. But it doesn't have to be every time. You can see that Christ didn't let the criticisms or the comments deter him from his mission. We read that he continued along the countryside and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing the sick and injured. Christ had a t tender and loving heart, something that you and I should have today. He was sensitive to everyone's needs. We read in St. Matthew, verse 36 of this passage, at the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Sounds like today. Sounds like what we're seeing on our televisions today. People troubled and abandoned. Lost without a shepherd. So we see that Christ was had compassion for the tired and hungry. It's something that we need to have for one another and, and for the world in general. The media and the social media show us all these images of, of hurting, lost, angry, disillusioned people. And yet they, they have no answers for these, these problems. And we need to show the world that we do. That the answer is in our beliefs and our faith in Christ our foundations in the scriptures. 
if we read verses 35 and 36 together, it's really apparent that Christ had compassion for his people. He had love for the folks. He healed them and, and he touched them in, in, their, in their deepest needs. And that's something we need to do today as his followers. Not just proclaiming the gospel with words, but also in our actions. We read in James 2, 15 and 16, If a brother or sister is without clothes and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warm and be filled, and yet you do not give them, what is necessary for their body. What use is that? We need to be cognizant of the needs of those people around us. Sometimes just telling them about the gospel, telling them about our beliefs, isn't good enough. Sometimes we need to actually reach out a helping hand. We need to touch them in their daily lives, whatever they may be. A couple things I want you to notice about Christ in, in this passage. First of all, he doesn't require them to all come to him. He could have simply sat in the temple porches his entire ministry and like a great philosopher and had people come to him and listen at his knee. No, that's not what he did. He traveled the countryside proclaiming the gospel. And that's the same for us. We, we don't need to require people to come to our churches and listen to our, our priests, our ministers. We need to go out and tell people about our beliefs. I don't mean shoving the gospel down their throat with every comment we make. But letting people know what we believe and why with gentleness and reverence. Letting them know that we have answers and our answers are based firmly in Christ. The second thing I'd like us to notice is not only did Jesus proclaimed the, the gospel of the kingdom. He went out and met the people's needs. He went out and touched them. And today we have to be the same way. We need to realize that just because we can doesn't mean we should. Sometimes in a situation, it's not about telling people about what the gospel says. It's not throwing scriptures at them, preaching at them. Sometimes in a situation, what's required of us is maybe just giving them a hug, holding their hands, crying with them, listening to their needs. Maybe all they need is a, a, a cup of coffee or a bottle of water. Sometimes that goes further than, than anything that we could possibly say. It's called a ministry of presence. We have to let the Holy Spirit lead us uh, and guide us in what we should do and not lead on, lean on our own understanding. We see that as we read at the end of the passage today, Jesus says in verse 37, the harvest is abundant, but the labors are few. Ask the harvest master to send out his labors for his harvest. Really, that's calling you and I. We're his laborers. And the harvest is out there. We need to respond to the harvest master. We need to respond by getting out of our pews, getting off our couches, getting out of our houses, and getting involved in a ministry. There are hundreds of ministries out there, folks. One tailor made for you, I'm sure. 
St. Teresa of Avila writes something that really touches me. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion onto this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands to which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, you are the bo his body. Christ has no body now on earth, but yours. The harvest master's calling. The need is great, the harvest is ripe. So it comes down to, how are you going to respond, folks? Those are my reflections for today. May the Lord richly bless you. May the Lord bless and keep you and hold you in the palm of his hands until we meet again. This is Father Steve, and I'm wishing you all a blessed day.